So uh, it's nothing but the higher than you know the value of Gini. You know Gini is a calculation. You know I know I can I can give the formula example where exactly it is. But you know based on the Gini index, you know it 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 split the data into two parts. Okay. And uh, there is a you know a, a package called Cod, you know which is nothing but classification and regression tree. This particular package uses GD method for the binary split. You know, we can, you know, there are many packages. We can see one of the packages for our sample. Okay. So there's something called information gain. Okay. So you now let me explain the information gain. Okay. So if you look at the three, you know, the three, you know, the circles, you know, we have three data sets. Okay, or three classification. Okay. So if we look at you know ABC. Uh, the C is totally uh, blue circles, correct? And uh, you know, B, the C is totally of blue circles. A has a lot of yellow circle and blue circle. So that means it has two classification. And, and B has, you know, a very small number of yellow circles and a large number of, you know, blue circles. Okay. So if you look at, you know, the C circle is totally blue class. You know, it's every object or every the record or the observation in the C class is blocked to one particular category. That means C is in a totally a few class and entropy of this particular one is closest to one or closest to zero. Okay. But if you look at you know B and C, you know B is less impure because we have around you know 70 to 80 percent of one class and remaining 20 percent is another class. So this one is closest to, you know, you know, a kind of, uh, you know, less impure. And, you know, for that, you know, we need more data. So here the data will go into the next level of split and, you know, try to split up, which is the best way to split up. Whereas in the C class, the root node itself will split up the data on certain, uh, certain classification. It go to A, it's very really less impure because, you know, uh, we cannot identify how the data we can split up, so it required more information. So, so the information gain when you are trying to split up, you know, the, it will take a decision. You know, the, the decision tree when trying to split up, it will check. You know, if I split up on the particular column, whether my information will be pure or not, based on it, it will, it will split up. So it takes a column, which column gives my, you know, the split up is more pure. And they, you know, then you take the column and, and split the split the column into you know two. Then it's going into the next next split up like that. So the decision tree and random forest will work on the split up based on these two methods, whether Gini index or information gain. When you when you are giving a, a out a input to you know any method, it checks okay whether if I split up on the column X or column Y, which which column gives or gives a, a better output or better information gain or better Gini index and take the column and split the column into two parts and before moving into the next split up. Hope you're clear. A little confusing. Yes, no, Sita. What about you, uh, Elika? Okay, yeah. So, you know, if, if you have 20 columns, okay, and one output is yes or no, so it, it what this column, say, the, the, the decision for us does, it checks for each and every 20 columns, which, which is the best column to take for the first split, which column gives me a better output compared to all other 19 columns and it split ups. So, that's the basic fundamental before it taking the next cloud. So if you have 20 columns and you know, so you know and one output, so totally we have 21 columns in a, in a data set. So so it takes okay if I take a column X, you know, and if the column gives a better output of Y, then it takes that you know the particular column for the first split up. Then it goes to column two, you know, X2, and check the output. Like so, like it does. So before splitting the first row, it it itself it takes all the 19, 19 columns and trying to find out which is the best column gives me a better output better information gain 
or better Gini index and it takes a column for the first root split up. Once it's done, it omits the first column and goes still into the you know the remaining you know the samples and try to find out what the next best in the you know the split up I can do. So like that it goes until that final all the leaves are you know divided. There is no final way I can divide the data. It will stop this you know, particular decision tree and it gives output to you. So simply you can follow this, you know, the tree, you know, the way, you know, if the if you're getting the output, okay, you know, the person is you know age above 30 and is getting a salary, can you predict you know whether the person will uh, you know uh, default the load or not? You can simply follow the you know the decision tree and you know you can get the output. So, you know, I'll give a better, you know, one more notes, you know, probably where you can understand the Gini index and, the, you know, the entropy calculation. But this is the mathematical formula to calculate the entropy. Uh, P, nothing but probability of the success. When you're going to split up the ratio, you know, will get a probability of success and probability of the failure, correct? Right? So, you know, Q is a, you know, probability of failure and P is the probability of success. So, you can, at any point of time, you know, any node you'll get, you know, uh, probability of failure and probability of success, you know, equal to one. Because uh, at any node, your probability will be 70% and success, uh, you know, success is 70 percentage, then failure will be 30 percentage. So at any particular node, the add up of P plus Q is, is equal to one. So you can just apply the formula to get the entropy of the calculation. I know. So the formula is minus P log to P? Uh... The log P log to B. No, formula is minus P log to P and minus then Q log to Q. Q, okay. So when the output is closest to zero, that is the best way to split. Okay. Yeah. If, then if, it, the, if, so, the, yeah, if the particular sample is divided by 50 50, then in the 50 50, then it will be like a, a equal to zero. Yeah, equal to what? No, no then, then the P plus Q is equal to 1. If we 50-50, 50-50, yeah, yeah. 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 the entropy will be like a minus P minus Q, P minus yeah. Q is equal to 0. Yeah, so if you take the, you know, the, the, the sample C, you know, the, you know, if we calculate the entropy for this particular sample, you know, the, the entropy will be closest to 0 or probably a 0 because yeah. this is a, you know, very best fit. You know, there is no other samples on the LO uh, data. Okay. Yeah. If, if we look at this one, this will be closest to one because this is more like a 50 50 split, it's closest to one. Okay. So this will be, you know, very closest to zero because it has very less, uh, you know, yellow and more blue. So probably it will be, you know, 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 or something like that. It will be there. So if you look at the calculation, it will be, you know, look like one. So here, you know, the probability of success is, you know, P is always one, Q will be zero. Correct, because the probability of failure will be zero, so Q will be zero. So you can, you know, you can calculate this one, and you can find out, you know, the entropy for this particular sample will be closest to zero because minus P log to P will be closest to zero when you calculate. You're getting it, Lalita. Are you there, Rita? Yeah, Sita. Okay. So, similarly, you know, uh, like I said, random forest, okay? Because if you take only one tree, you know, probably, you know, like, like you know, if you're going to give a, a, a input to one person and one person is trying to judge, okay, this is the best way to split, okay? So, you cannot take one person's judgment, right? You know, normally the one person's judgment will fail because you must be taking some other things in calculation. So random forest, nothing but you know you are going to give the same set to the multiple process. You know, probably a five hundred people. Like you know, classic example, we are trying to predict yeah, 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 you know what you call the election results. Right? We are trying to take a sample from you know many process. We are not going to take a yeah, yeah, result from only one expert. Right? So we'll be taking a sample from the multiple persons to judge you know what will be the outcome of the results. So it's a typical of random tree, right? We are going to give an input to you know the data set to a, 
uh, n number of persons or n number of trees and uh, we are going to take the output from the each and every tree and we are going to probably uh, what we are going to average the output of all the people and we are going to judge okay this is the you know outcome of the results okay so the random follow is mainly to improve the performance so that we can use many trees with a random sample of features as a split so in the random forest, you know, we we'll have you know more than hundred or five hundred trees. We can we can specify how much trees we want to use for the particular you know algorithm. So for random forest too, each and every tree will take you know if we have a data sets of you know five thousand rows and twenty columns, the random forest will choose probably you know twelve to fifteen columns and probably three thousand uh, you know rows for the first tree. And second tree will take again a random number of features and random number of you know observations. So like that, it will take the random value for you know uh, all the five hundred trees, and it will predict the outcome. Each and every tree will predict the outcome, and the outcome finally will be average across all the trees. And you know if you take the you know the average, probably it will be come closest to the you know, what we have in the actual. So that what the random tree will do. Rather than we are doing only one decision tree. The random forest will have 500 decision trees, you know, to avoid any kind of you know the errors or the performance of the outcome. You know, the random forest is the, one of the best way to you know uh, predict the outcome like classification or the regression tree because it take the average of all the predictions, and if you take the all the average, it will be up closest to your you know the actual calculation. So you can do it you know in the real life. So rather than predicting from one person, you are going to predict from the multiple persons. <clears throat> so that's what it, it says. Suppose there is a one very strong feature of the data sets where you use that you know back the trees, the most of the trees will use the feature as the top split, resulting in an ensemble of similar trees that are highly correlated. So I give the more notes to you guys, you know, there are very good notes where you can you know go and read about you know the random forest and back trees, but you know the underlying concept is you know it 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 picks up you know a sample number of columns and sample number of rows from the data sets and and you know predict the outcome for one tree and multiple trees does the same thing and finally you know the random forest will average the outcome of all the trees and give the output back to you. So this one, you know, normally, you know, what happens when the decision tree happens, you know, you know, it takes a sample data set, you know, probably we are going to feed all the data sets, you know, into a learning model and we are, the learning model will use, you know, a trading algorithm and it gives the output. You know, the output nothing but similar to, you know, like this, okay, you know, this is the best way to split up, you know, based on certain calculation. So if we take a road, you know, like, you know, you know, you know, it will give you a, a final destination. We have one, two, three, four destinations. If we, if we come to any way, it will come an output, correct? If we come like this from the root, you know, the different is yes, then I reach the destination, okay, the outcome will be, you know, no. You know, if I take another way, the different is no, then I come to the next junction, you know, I'm checking whether the marriage status is yes or no. If the person is married, then I decide the output should be no only. So like that, you know, we can take any number of decisions. So that's what it does, you know, it takes, you know, sorry. The model will take, you know, a, a, a training data sets and try to split up into a, a, a tree model based on, you know, what are the input data set we gave and what is the output we want to classify. And the model is, you know, built up, this is nothing but a tuition tree model. And you know, then we can apply the model to any data sets. The data set can be a, you know, in a one record or multiple record. It will, it will, you know, find out what is the outcome of the model by going through the, you know, the addition sheet. Hope we've got the point. Yes. Yeah, got, got the point, Sita. Uh, oh. Sita, uh, can we apply different uh, algorithms like a um, linear tree, li sorry, linear regression algorithm and log uh, logistical algorithm and uh, KNN? And uh, 
you know, see, this is this is the decision tree. What we are doing here is nothing but a logical algorithm. Right? It's trying to pick up the output in the logical algorithm. Correct? Yes. No, no, no. What my question is, can we apply the same uh, different uh, regression techniques for the same data? Yes, yes. So, yes, yes. You yeah. can, you can so, apply. You know, so, when you are doing a modeling, you should not stick with one modeling. Okay. You should apply yeah. decision tree. You should apply the random forest. You should apply in you know, a neural network. You know, you try, you try to, you know, you ultimate aim is to minimize the error, correct? So yeah. Error, error for logical and linear regression modeling is totally different. Because for, yeah. for, for logical regression modeling is nothing but the accuracy, correct? We are trying to find the exactly. accuracy. For logistic, we, uh, it will take like a, either um, 0 to 1. It will yeah. be the value between. Yeah, correct. So you apply all. Yeah, you apply all the modeling, okay, whatever modeling you know, you know, apply, you know, probably, you know, 12 or 15 modeling. And finally come to a conclusion which model you want to take. It. Because this all like, you know, experimentation, okay, each and every model will take, you know, various parameters, right? So you need to tweak the model, you know, apply the modeling, you know, parameters, then come to a final model, which model gives the best output. So it's all like experimentation, uh, you know, you know, if you, if in the real life, you know, you can apply probably 100 or 200, 200 models, but don't go that much. Because again, you know, if you're going to spend more time on the particular modeling, you will be spending more money on the project, right? So take a decision which model you say best way and, you know, probably apply 10 or you know, 5 or 6 model and take your output. The random forest will apply many modeling, you know. When you're applying the random forest, you take various, you know, parameters. I'll explain the various parameters. Okay. Getting it as it? Yes, it does. Okay. So, uh, so once we build up the model, we can apply, like you know, so apply that model into you know this particular concept. So you know, you can take the first output. Okay, you know, the attribute one, two, three, four, class. You know, what is it, what is the output you want to predict? Okay. So it will come to this first one, it take a decision, you know, whether the particular split of S or no. If it is no, then you know the output will be a no. Uh, or the way you go to the other branch and try to split up the data or take a decision based on the other columns. So like that it will do. So example, you know, the test data is refund is no. Okay. So it comes, you know, the, the test data comes into the first root, uh, you know, the split up. It checks whether the particular column is, you know, yes or no. So it's a no. So instead of going here, it will come to, you know, this path. Okay. Now it checks, you know, what is my, you know, the measure status is married. Okay. So it goes to here and it decides that if they cheat, yes or no. So the output of no will go to this particular column. It will not check, you know, the, the third column because the addition has been made in the second split up itself. So the output will go into no. But if this output is singular or diverse instead of marriage, it will come to the next split up, which is tax, tax bill income. Okay. So here it will check what the decision is going to check. It's going to check whether my salary is above 80k or below 80k. Okay. So taxable income is above 80k. Okay. Then it will come to this one. If taxable income is below 80k, it goes to no. So the output goes to no. So if you have 20 columns, we can do a you know, 20 split up. Uh, probably you can split, you know, I want only seven split up. So after seven split up, it will give the output of what is that, you know, you want to, uh, you know, what is the uh, output of the particular data. So so this is a simple way, you know, we are taking the decision on the real life based on certain value. The decision tree works on the same way. Okay. So that's the best way, you know, uh, you know, we are going to use a package called RPART. RPART is a regression, you know, partition analysis. Uh, you know, you know, this is uses to you know, addition tree models. And, uh, you know, to plot a graph of the addition is split up, we can use a, a different library for RPART, you know, uh, dot plot. And, uh, you know, for building a random forest, we can use, you know, yeah, a package called random forest package okay and i gave one more you know steady notes you know probably you know the yeah, best way to explain you know the the entire tutorial model you know 
you can go to this link and they you know get the you know uh, the notes or probably uh, take note it is a very way to you know split up this data into python but the underlying concept is same you know whether you are going to write on python or r any other any other programming but the addition tree or the end of part or is work from the same concept so to understand the concept yeah. you can use the particular link i know and they get a lot of details about that particular you know end of forest or addition tree yeah and sita and these uh, regression techniques are same as in python also the underlying math underlying concept is same only that the you know you know the syntax will be different you know it uses you know different package you know different uh-huh. uh, you know the syntax because java java is different right? but underlying yeah. concept underlying split up everything is same yeah okay so like a uh, data cleaning also same in the python right yes, uh, yes yes everything you know again you need to do that you know missing value so no converting the, the, yeah. the thing is in the getting the data and the uh, um, reducing the data noise and cleaning the data the same for all the like uh, r and python and, you know but, yeah you could you could take any package you need to go through all the you know the steps all the life cycles you know getting the data yeah. cleaning the data you know then applying machine learning concept then applying the prediction everything will be same only the packages yeah. will be say different the language is different nothing else yeah okay and see the one more thing uh, is your birthday today yeah exactly yeah happy birthday sita yeah thank you how do you got to know that yeah but i see so i got see some notification in the below yeah yeah correct, correct. yeah so, so that's why i got it out okay okay so, sita happy birthday sita yeah thank you uh, sita and ajay thanks for your wishes okay, okay. welcome <coughs> so let's go into you know uh, you know the core actual core okay you know how we can split up okay so in the previous example you know uh, we you know use that you know the okay so like i said we need to install the three packages which you know i told you what is you know uh, what do you call let me go to this so these are three packages we need to install like our part that our part dot plat random forest these two you know the first two is for the decision tree and there third one is for the random forest method so probably you can install that you know packages you know then we can go over so for for the walk through i'm going to use the existing data set which is available with our okay the data sets is you know let me use all the packages first So probably if you have R, you know you can open up and you can run the same command in your site. Okay. Not install the random forest. So. Okay, I have installed all the packages. I loaded all the packages into my memory. So using the library command. Okay. Then you know, close this one. Okay. So you know, for use the R part library, you know, it's a same concept like what we use that you know the. you know the chain and our property even the linear modeling you no know, it's nothing but all for then we are going to use this formula then we are going to give the data and method and control you now if you want to understand what is the various parameters of our for you know you can go here and you know, try to say help our for we can for any any library name it gives the various 
parameters of this output. Okay, you can understand, you know, what the formula, everything either you can give, you know, like this, or you can give question or part. It's the same. So it takes a lot of, you know, parameters. You know, you can go through the help, help section to understand, you know, various various methods. You know, if it is, you know, logical equation, then we are, when we are going to give you a class method. If it is something else, we'll be giving you some other method, out of why, etc. So we can, you know, you can see, you know, you can go through the entire, you know, the help section to understand what are the various parameters. So you know, this is the you know, formula we are going to use. You know, this formula nothing but y is equal to you know x x1 plus x2 x3 something like that and what is the training data sets and what is the method and what is the transport let us go through one by one it's a real life case study okay so what we are going to use you know uh, we are going to use nyposis data set which is a data set in build available within r when you install the r you know, it's a, a medical data set which, which, you know, talks about if a, a child operated on particular, you know, a, a symptom, you know, you know, whether, you know, a necrosis is a kind of a, a, a fungal a, in, in infection, you know, whether, uh, you know, your deformation happening, you know, after the operation, uh, whether, you know, the data set is going to check whether deformation is going to happen after the operation or not. So for the child, you know, once you operate it, it, you know, it class various parameters and we are going to check based on the various parameters and various output whether deformation is going to happen or not. But this is a sample data set, but we can use any data sets like, you know, we use the Titanic data sets. Right? We can apply the same concept what I'm going to explain in the Titanic data set to find, find out whether the person is survived or not using the same concept. Okay. So the particular data set has, you know, you have four columns, like I said, necrosis. A factor with a level, a absent person indicator of necrosis. So necrosis is nothing but a type of deformation was present after the operation. So if the, if you operate a child for a particular, you know, a, a, a disease, and after the, the operation, you know, we need to monitor the child whether the particular, you know, deformation is going to happen or not. If it is, uh, you know, the deformation happens, then, you know, the child is at the risk and we need to, you know, uh, you know, involve some more operation. So that's what it's trying to predict. So the output will have, you know, the age in number of months, you know, what are the various columns that particular data sets, you know, whether necrosis is present or, or, or absent. This is the uh, output we want to predict.